Hey guys, this is a quick look at these USB uh, spectrometers I got in this recent uh, equipment donation. These are Ocean Optics USB 2000 and USB 4000 spectrometers, all self-contained uh, fiber optic coupled input. Inside, uh, I've just opened this one up, it's, you can't really see too much, just a board with a Cypress USB chip, but I do did find a picture online of uh, what's actually in them. I didn't want to take out the top board, which would mess up the calibration, so uh, I found this picture from the manufacturer's website. It basically shows the fiber optic input going across, the light goes across a lens, bounces off a grating, off another mirror, and then onto a linear CCD array. I think the 2000 pixel one uses a Sony uh, CCD, another one uses a, uh, uh, what was it? Yeah, the 2000 uses a Sony ILX 511 CCD, and the other 4000 uses a Toshiba TCD 1304AP. And here's an actual view of inside. Some uh, university actually uh, milled out the bottom of one so you can see uh, how it's actually built. They, both, they painted the PCB black to, to reduce all the uh, stray light possible, and the CCD's mounted this little board that screws onto the uh, onto the upper PCB, and that's used. That's it can be moved around to adjust focus. Here's an LED light. You can see the spectrum is uh, basically there, there's the blue uh, pump LED, and then the output from the from the phosphors. Very pretty smooth, except it's missing some uh, light in this uh, blue area, sort of bluish uh, turquoise area. It took a bit of effort, but I was able to find it incandescent. I don't use many of those anymore. And that's, of course, has the very, uh, very pretty smooth, uh, smooth curve with a few peaks. I think those are due to absorption in the, uh, in the glass. And of course, the spectrum continues well off into the infrared that we can't see. That's why these bulbs are so inefficient. So much energy is radiated up in the infrared. And of course, very little uh, ultraviolet is produced at all. Fluorescent lights, such as this compact fluorescent, have a much uh, peakier spectrum. There's a few peaks uh, down here, and I believe this green one also is from the mercury, uh, the actual mercury arc, and the rest of the peaks are from uh, from phosphorus. Uh, there's a good page um, on Wikipedia uh, about this. This gra their graph looks almost identical. They also they have all the uh, peaks labeled as well. These thin T8 style fluorescent lamps are very similar to the uh, compact fluorescent with the same uh, very peaky uh, structure. However, these uh, T12 style, the slightly larger ones, at least uh, the cool white, uh, the ones that are of cool white color, are quite different. You can still see the, the uh, mercury uh, peaks, but the phosphors are much uh, it produces a much wider band, sort of in the yellow region, and because there's pre very little red, they don't render uh, things properly. Like your like your skin will come up as a strange color under these uh, T12 style lamps when it doesn't under the T8s, and of course a laser will just show up as one uh, narrow peak. We can also use the spectrometer to determine the pass band of filters. I've got a couple of filters here. One of them uh, it's unlabeled. It appears to be a uh, blue, it passes low, uh, short, uh, short wavelengths like blue. See, so it makes the light uh, completely blue. The other one is an anti-mercury filter. This, I believe, is to remove mercury lines. It sort of uh, turns things to a, sort of an orangish. But let's actually measure what which bands of light these pass and which ones these reject. The setup for this is pretty simple. We just have a uh, hello. Come on, out of the way. Setup for this is pretty simple. We just have a light aiming into the fiber. We've got a bit of paper over the end to sort of disperse the light a bit more and to uh, reduce the intensity. And then we just take a, a uh, reference shot with the light on and with light off. And then it can know how uh, the, the difference for each, for each wavelength. It knows how much light comes through unblocked and then how much light, light comes through when there's, uh, when there's no light coming through. It can use then you can compute can, can compute the uh, transmittance based on that. So now we just have to take the uh, uh, capture the uh, reference with it off, and then capture it again with it on. And here we have pretty much 100% transmittance in the visible band. 
really a lot of noise outside the visible band because of the because uh, the light doesn't produce any any light uh, those wavelengths at all. So it's basically it's basically uh, almost doing a divide by zero because there's no difference between the uh, the reference and the uh, dark. Anyway, now if we put the filter in, let's for example, let's stick the uh, blue filter in there. You can see it passes just the uh, short wave, just the uh, short blue wavelengths, cutting off something like 450 nanometers. And if we put the uh, anti-mercury filter in, you can see it cuts off the blue, and it also cuts off the uh, uh, band in the middle where the mercury, where some of the uh, where the sort of the mercury green line is, while passing all the rest. It's interesting how they can make filters like this that pass just narrow bands like this. Let's try a pair of sunglasses. Uh, you, you might think that these are just uh, gray, but let's see what we actually get. Yeah, it doesn't appear that it has any uh, sort of color to it. Hmm, turns out these actually have quite a different uh, pass band than, than we would have thought for something that just, uh, that's just supposed to be gray. I think it's due to the fact that uh, the eye is much less sensitive to reds above about 650 nanometers, so the high transmittance we get up in the red and infrared actually doesn't uh, factor in too much to how they look. So on average, the response is sort of flat uh, across, and that, and that, uh, that gives the, uh, the, gray, uh, the gray effect without giving any uh, tint or color to the image. These oxyacetylene welding glasses have sort of a green tinge to them. And that definitely shows up uh, uh, in the spectrum where they basically completely block uh, blue and ultraviolet and significantly attenuate all the other wavelengths. Although, strangely, I I'd assume that they would uh, attenuate infrared quite a bit, although they don't uh, seem to that much except in the higher, uh, longer wavelengths. This auto darkening welding helmet, uh, while the shade is light, blocks everything below about 450 nanometers and everything above around 700. And when it's obviously when it's uh, in the dark mode, it'll get way way darker. Actually, that just darkened because the the lamp uh, fell out of place. This is the optic setup from an LCD uh, projector. The light from the lamp comes in here. This mirror bounces the blue off, which then goes through the uh, uh, blue panel, then the green gets bounced off this uh, this mirror, leaving the uh, red going through. The green goes through that panel, then the red comes around, goes to the red panel, and there's in the center there's a combining prism, then it goes out the lens. So if we look at this mirror, this sh we should see this uh, reflecting uh, green, or reflecting uh, blue. Yeah, so since this reflects blue, we should see it passing other wavelengths. Yeah, so the blue at the bottom is being reflected and everything else is being passed. Uh, the next mirror should reflect uh, green. Yeah, it depends what we have to make sure we tilt this at the right angle. But yeah, generally the green, uh, the greenish band uh, is being reflected there and the other bands are being passed. Actually, blue doesn't really uh, matter in this case because the, all the blue light has been removed already by the other mirror. And then the, all the light that passes is then the red which goes through the last panel. And you can see how the, these uh, dichroic um, mirrors, depending on I'm just changing the angle of the mirror now, that's flat or that's uh, perpendicular to the path of the light. It actually changes the wavelength. These are specifically designed to be operated at 45 degrees like this. And the farther you change them, the, the more uh, the worse the operator, there just changes the operating characteristics. And this little bit here is the uh, combination polarizer and uh, filter. This should, yeah, we can see it here. It remove it uh, keeps only the red. This removes the uh, any unwanted light. And since it's a polarizer, we'll lose about half the light because of that. So yeah, exactly as we expect. Pretty very sharp cutoff, and the intensity is only at about fifty percent. Here is this uh, tri-band color corrector filter that we were, I was looking at, at that in the uh, uh, parts donation video. And it produces sort of a, a uh, much darker uh, bluish image, so put that in there. Very low intensity, uh, 
a little bit more blue passing through as we saw. Let me see if we can turn the gain on this up. Then we can see it uh, but that's 10 times the gain now. We're getting some mercury peaks in there from the fluorescent lights, but generally, yeah, it passes more blue, less, uh, less sort of in the mid-band, and then seems to pass infrared pretty well. A similar setup can be used to measure the reflectance of, uh, for example, ink on paper. In this case, we just have the light aiming down, uh, and, the, and we just measure the reflected light uh, at the, with the fiber. Looking at this card, let's look at the uh, colors around uh, around this area. Uh, that's the yellow right there, as it expects. There's the red. There's the green, which is a reasonably dark green, which is why it's not so intense. And there's the uh, blue. Um, let's see what else can we look at. Let's look at a bit of uh, Canadian money. This is the uh, sort of purplish color ten. Uh, this is the green 20, and that's the uh, the red 50. And now we'll just cycle up the rainbow colored edge of these glasses starting from this tip. So that's sort of the uh, sky blue, that's green, that's yellow, that's uh, sort of the light colored orange, that's the dark orange, or is that red? And uh, there's the purple. And then we're back to that uh, sort of sky blue again. And here's a bunch of marks from various different highlighters. Uh, starting with the blue. Uh, this is the pink uh, right here. This is the sort of ugly greenish color. That's the other pink. And this is the uh, fluorescent yellow. It's of note here that the fluorescent yellow actually does fluoresce. This is the white paper uh, without the yellow on it, and this is the yellow. So the, the yellow is actually fluorescing and increasing the light intensity in the green region. That's why it looks so bright. It looks like what it's doing is absorbing some of the light in the blue region and radiating it back out in the slightly uh, longer wavelength in the, in the green region. So that's where the actual energy is coming from the eye is much more sensitive to light in green than it is in blue, so that's why it appears brighter. I pulled the gain down a bit, and that highlighter does add a good 20% uh, uh, intensity to the, to the uh, light, light reflected by the paper itself. It's actually really interesting. I never knew that highlighters actually added light at some wavelengths. I thought they just uh, appeared to be bright due to the color. Looking back at the pink color, that also has some fluorescence as well, except uh, it removes uh, part of the removes the green light and turns it into uh, sort of an orange color light. It doesn't appear that the blue one does that at all, though. That just seems to absorb uh, wavelengths sort of in the orange and uh, yellow region. And the fluorescence of the yellow highlighter becomes extremely apparent under the when we put the blue filter in front of the light. Uh, let me see if I can get a better shot of that. Yeah, that's really glowing brightly there. Anyway, I hope you found that video on spectrometers interesting. Thanks for watching.